Hi everyone, I'm Winnie and I'm a primary school teacher and a relieving assistant principal and today I'm going to show you how to assess your students without marking. Yay. Um, so I'm going to show you this one way how to do it. There are um, a few, yeah, a couple of, a few ways that you can do this. So this isn't the only way to assess your students without marking. Um, so that's a good thing. And I can share with you other strategies as well. Um, so today I'm going to show you this um, one strategy that I've been using um, and I started to use it before um, COVID and it helped so much um, with, yeah, just saving time with, um, yeah, and just finding out where my students were at, finding out um, what they already knew, et cetera, so that I can really differentiate and um, cater for my students' needs. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. So here is an example of a, um, yeah, a pretest um, that I've given to my stage two class and I've been using Google Forms, which has been amazing because you can turn it into a quiz and you can put in the answers and you can, and it will, you know, as soon as they submit in the form and as soon as they submit in their answers to their test, then it just comes out and they can have a look at how they went um, and you as a teacher can put in the correct responses and when they click on submit, they can actually look at how they did. And this has been really powerful as well because when uh, my students click on submit, then they can get that instant feedback and they can see, okay, so where do I need, what can I already do? What goals do I need to work on? Um, and that's what I want for them. I want them to, you know, know what they need to work on um, and yeah, just know what their goals are as well, which is why um, I do put the math goals in, um, yeah, in this, test as well. So as you can see, even just going up, I put in um, what the goal one is. Um, so using the jump and split strategy, and then I put it, yeah, put in all of the questions. So all of the question one is related to goal one. Um, all of, you know, question two is related to um, goal two. And then it gives them that instant feedback that, you know, if you got this incorrect, then that's the goal that you're on. That's what you're going to be working on. And it means that um, the students, you know, it's really differentiated. Um, they know what they're working on. And uh, yeah, and it's very easy for um, me as the teacher to go in and see their um, test and see, okay, yep. So they've gotten all of these questions correct. Now, where are they up to for, yeah, so for this student, she's got a lot of hers um, correct and now she is working on goal five. So she'll need to work on um, subtraction, trading, especially with all the um, zeros as well. So that is where she would be working on. And if they do get all of um, the answers correct, then they're on goal seven, which is um, applying their knowledge into problem solving tasks. And sometimes I give them, you know, little projects for them to do so that they can apply their, yeah, apply their knowledge. And sometimes um, in these tests, because you do put in the answers, sometimes if they do get it incorrect, so this student over here, they missed out on that. And I think, Normally they would have gotten it right, so I would I would give that to them. Um, so sometimes you do have to you know have a quick look and just um, yeah. And you can also sometimes I let my students know that you know some um, the if it's if your answer and their answer is um, pretty much the same because sometimes you know you put in the number or the word etc. Or they might have spelt it incorrectly um, then you know, as long as they um, were trying to spell the correct answer correctly, um, and if it's a word and not the digit, then they're still, yeah, they're still correct. So let me just show you what the original form was. So this was the Google form that I gave um, all of, um, oh, this should be stage two, stage two class. Okay, so, 
Um, you can put in questions. You can import questions if you have them. You can put in yeah, the title and description, images, videos. You can add um, a section as well. So um, I've put in our classes because we do give it out to our whole stage. So um, it's good to make sure it's on it's not mixed up and we can still find um, our own students in our class. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like um, from the teacher end. And this is the title and description that I put in, and then you can add your question. So I'll just show you the um, different features in this form, and then I'll actually go through um, how I create um, yeah, create a new one because this week we're doing patterns and algebra. Um, so I will actually need to make a test for that too. Um, so yeah, so there are different sections. You can, in the questions, you can decide if you want to make it multiple choice, if you want to make it um, check boxes, drop down. So there are lots of different options that you can pick. For this one, I've done multiple choice. If you do check boxes like, where have I done checkboxes? Yeah. So if there are multiple options, then you can put checkboxes there. So there are multiple correct answers. Um, and you can also put in pictures and photos as well to help with um, answering that question. So this is a money question. So I needed to put in an image. So you can do that through here. Um, insert an image, you can upload it through your computer, camera, Google Drive, photo search, etc., etc., and you can also remove it or change it and align it however you wish. Um, yeah, and then to turn it into a quiz, so if you have a normal form, um, then and you want it to mark itself, then you will need to go into settings and you can collect the email addresses. Find that helps a lot. Uh, and you just go into quizzes and you just turn it into a quiz. And that's where, so if you turn it into a quiz, then what that means is that you have an answer key section. So you can click on the answer key, you can give it a point value. You don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, yeah, and then you click on the correct answer and then you can give feedback as well. So for multiple choice, you can give feedback for incorrect answers and you can also give feedback for correct answers. But because I'm using this as a um, form to for my students to figure out, you know, what goal they are working on, then I put in, you know, if it's incorrect, then this is the goal that you're working on. Um, and then for open-ended questions or short answer ones, you can also put in the answer key and you can mark um, all the other answers incorrect and it gives feedback for all answers. So that's why I say if you're incorrect, then you are on this goal here. So yeah, and then you can, yeah, put in a whole bunch of questions, link it to um, whatever, whatever goal, if you use math goals, etc. And yeah, so I will show you how, um, a Google form that I need to make for patterns and algebra. So in your drive, you just click on new, you go to more and then Google forms, and then it'll open it straight up for you. And it will give you um, the title so you can put And it's for stage two, test my first question. Put the name in. And then I'll do multiple choice because we're sending this out to all of our classes. So I'm going to put all the different classes in so it doesn't get mixed up. Obviously, if you're not um, send if you're just sending it to your own class, then 
you can do that. You can make the question required so they have to answer it. Um, you can also duplicate it as well. So if you duplicate it, that's what it looks like. And then, so that's really good if you have um, similar questions and you just want to change the content of it a little bit. So I'm going to add the first, oh, actually, I am going to put in a title and description because I want to um, put in what that goal is. So this was a pretest that we made last year. Um, let me just put in goal one from our math program in. So goal one, so I can continue and describe and create number patterns. Okay, so question one, one, eight is the following number patterns. So last year when we did this, um, we made sure that our question number related to our goal so that um, when we did mark it or if we did go through and mark it as a whole class and um, do some explicit teaching like that, um, it meant that we knew that just by looking at um, the students' tests, that if they got question one incorrect, then okay, that's the goal that they're working on. Um, so it really helps with differentiating um, and knowing where our students were at. So complete the following number patterns. Then I'll just copy this. Okay, and I can either give them multiple choice or I'm gonna make a short answer there. And then I Got to remember to, oh yeah, I want to collect the email addresses and I also want to turn this into a quiz. Save there. Okay. So now we have an answer key and now you can assign a point. You don't have to if you don't want to. So the next one, this is going up by four. So 18. And I'll mark all the other answers incorrect. And the instant feedback that they'll get is save. Done. And then I'll add another question in. So that will be one B. Then We'll describe, describe the pattern. What is increasing or decreasing by? And then I'll leave that as a short answer. Obviously, you can do multiple choice if you want. Point, and then I'll do increase. Same by four, or I'll do four. I'll mark all the other answers incorrect, and in the feedback, I'll say, um, got four uh, plus four, or um. Um, if not, you are one. So sometimes when kids write in the answers, they have tried to spell. <laughs> increasing by four or they do plus and then space four and it marks them incorrect so that's why i need to put in there that you know if you did get that um, or something very similar to this um, then you are correct because um, if it doesn't give the exact answer that i've given then it will mark them wrong um, and i just want them to know that yeah that if they've accidentally spelt it incorrect and that that's what they were trying to spell, then it is correct. So, yeah. So that's how you, um, yeah, that's how you create your own form. And then once you are done with 
um, the quiz or the um, Google form, then you can send the link. So you can shorten it. So you can send the link, you can um, put it into your Google Classroom, you can send it out to your students to complete um, so that they can do it um, yeah, in the class or if you um, don't have devices for everyone, then you can do it in a rotation um, as well. And then just, yeah, and then you can click on to responses when they're all done and you can see how they went. So yeah, that is one way to um, assess and find out where your students are at without marking um, because the forms will do it for you and it will give um, instant feedback to your students as well, which I found really helpful uh, because then they, they also know what their goals are and what they're working on, um, which is really good. And so yeah, so that's one way. Um, I, will, I can show you another way in another video. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful to you. Um, you can comment below, like if, yeah, how you could use this in your own classroom too. And yeah, and hope this was helpful and I hope you have a really good week or weekend. Um, and I will see you in my next video. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm at Miss Winnie Tang and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. So yeah. All right. See you in my next video. Bye.